Uh, I'm Connor. I'm going to talk about uh, WebAssembly. So I'm more going to cover like the concept of WebAssembly more so than like actually like so much how it works because one, it doesn't really necessarily exist yet. Uh, it's being worked on right now. It's even like I think it's still even before like the MVP. It's like a prototype right now. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to talk about concepts and like why you should care about it and maybe keep your eye on it. Um, so what is it? It's like a abstract syntax tree. So basically, it just uh, is a way to like parse like a language like C or C++ into binary. So I don't know how much you know about abstract syntax trees, but it basically just you know handles conditions and turns it into something else. Um, some common theme that I'm going to show throughout this is uh, it's like an improvement to JS. It's not like a replacement for JS. It's the an improvement. So it is. Um, it serves as a compiler target, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, and it is designed to run all on the browser. So it, the main focus of this is to make large applications run on the browser. Yeah. So what does it do? Like I, uh, it runs native code on the browser. So things like you would write in C, C++, right now that's the only thing they have their prototype working for. But they plan on making it work for other languages. Um, so it'll run native code, which is things that like, will interact with like the computer itself, but on the browser to give more power to the browser and what it can do. Um, yeah, so all it does is just uh, it makes the browser uh, understand binary. So it actually runs, it'll make it run really fast. How it works is it takes your source code, uh, the compiler, which turns the source code into like bytecode or some sort of assembly, uh, which I don't want to get too much into. Um, and it'll turn that, and then it'll go to uh, compile to WebAssembly, which will turn into binary. And that binary will be then sent to the browser, which will um, run along with any sort of JavaScript on there. And it'll be able to turn that binary into like a functioning thing on your browser. Um, another cool thing about it, too, is that um, when you compile it, it is, at least in the future, another th thing to be clear about is that um, they weren't very clear with like what actually exists and what's in the prototype. So I'm not sure if it does this yet, but it is, they're saying a, a big benefit of WebAssembly is that as you can, is that it'll like separate it with a debugging sort of file. So like people that don't really know binary, which not many people would be able to like go through a binary and like debug it, they'll have like a separate file that will help you just debug it and you can just change it if there are any problems. So I don't want to get too much into this, but how it works and how like assembly kind of works is it's just there's a lot of memory allocation, which is like, well, you're used to JavaScript. You don't want to like deal with that. Um, but it helps things run faster when you learn how to handle memory. Um, so you just like you have these registers. You have to deal with like how much memory each thing is taking up. And like there's no like objects. You just have to deal with like uh, like integers and stuff like that and the amount of bytes it takes up. Um, so more into how it works, it's kind of cool actually. One, it's backwards compatible. So you can compile into binary, go back, maybe you know, you know, go back into whatever your like, source was, which is very good for editing and whatnot. Um, another, th and an another thing it works is like you have your interface on the web. You can have that uh, like, call back to your source code, and that will keep sending it back. So uh, and, like, in this example, they have like, um, Function like run, it'll 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 call foo go towards the um, the web assembly and then that will then like call bar onto the browser JavaScript. It's I don't want to get too much into it. Um, so some features that it'll have, um, like I said, I'm not quite sure what it has already, but some some things that it'll have is that text file for debugging. Um, there's single instruction, multiple data, which is basically like you have like code chunks and you will be able to use those code chunks with just one instruction, which is something that, you know, is kind of cool for efficiency. Um, that'll add to better load times and they'll be able to integrate it into the DOM. Uh, and as I mentioned before, garbage collection is kind of a big deal. So the current things don't do a good job with garbage collection, so this will be very efficient. Um, and that little snippet down there is just like an example of code. I don't really know what it's doing, though. I just wanted to make sure you guys can see it. Um, 
Yeah, so there are current things out there that are similar, like ASM.js, which I find kind of funny because ASM.js is obviously written in JavaScript, um, which to me is like counterintuitive a little bit. But um, it definitely uh, like uh, improves on that. Um, one, because it won't be in JS, and two, because uh, the binary, getting it into binary, actually makes it run very fast. Some native code on the web today using like ASM.js and other things, obviously not WebAssembly yet. Uh, anyone use Unity or Unreal for game engines, which if I have enough time, I'll show you. Um, Repl.it, I know everyone used that. So any sort of thing that'll um, like simulate something you would do just on your computer, you can do on the web, which is really cool. Um, something that I think is really cool to think about is PDFs. I didn't really think about that, how that's, um, that's like native code. That's like something you're loading up on the web page. It's not being like run on the web page. So why do we care? Uh, for one, uh, it's being worked on by some pretty important uh, influential people in like the web development community like Google, Apple, Mozilla, and Microsoft. So obviously they see a huge future into this. Um, another thing is, like I said, I would, I would keep pointing out is that it's actually a complement to JS. So like while you're developing like with JS, like this could be something like you should look into using to help your application. Um, another thing is like just use another language, learn another lang language. Like you just don't want to go into web development knowing like uh, JS or like maybe just Ruby or something like learn a C++ it'll help you uh, a good uh, quote that I found was uh, WebAssembly fills in the gaps that would be awkward to fill with JavaScript because a lot of things JavaScript does is very inefficient so potential uses like for WebAssembly is virtual reality uh, as, and some people I know Sam worked on this for his project uh, collaborative editing uh, it would be very easy to do or a lot quicker with WebAssembly, uh, CAD software, uh, machine learning, stuff we're all interested in, and uh, most importantly, games. Games would be a lot of fun. Um, so some sources that I actually wanted to go over were um, that YouTube video is actually a guy from Google who's currently working on uh, WebAssembly like directly. It's like open source, so it's pretty cool. Um, and there's also a GitHub repo, which I forgot to include, but there's a GitHub repo that has all the um, files, everything, demos of WebAssembly up that you should check out. I think that'd be really cool. Um, there's also another guy that's working on it and has another cool little intro to this that basically covered what I covered, but a lot more into it. Um, yeah, so for your health. Thank you. So I also, before I get into questions, I wanted to see if this will load up. This is